Hello again and welcome to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with and today our with is John Watson. So John, to get us started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely, and thanks for having me, Michael. Uh, a, a colleague of mine recently said to me, you know, I think everybody that got into digital learning uh, a while back, and, and she and I have both been in this for 20 plus years, uh, and she said, I, I think everybody who got into this uh, either loved or hated school when they were in school. Uh, and I put myself firmly in the camp of those who hated school. And so I have spent years uh, prior to getting into digital learning in other non-traditional areas, working in experience, experiential education, uh, did a, worked for two school years as a, an instructor in a, a science school in the mountains in Colorado, led kids on trips in Belize and Maine and Vermont, and just wanted to be involved with organizations that were engaging students in educational ways that were non-traditional. And that's how I got involved. And uh, I ended up with a, uh, an early learning management system company in the late 1990s that turned into some consulting in the early 2000s. And uh, we've been on that path ever since. So John, for as long as I've known you and probably longer, you've been working with school leaders in digital learning. And obviously this school year hasn't quite gone the way that most of us would have expected back in September. So what advice would you have for school leaders as they're looking at how this school year is ending? My advice to just about everybody right now, and, and it's actually the advice I've been given and taken to heart is be kind, be kind to yourself, be kind if you're a school leader, be kind to your teachers, be kind to your parents and your students. It's a new world, and the idea that we're trying to uh, live according to the standards that applied two months ago just doesn't really make sense anymore. And that's become clear around things like state assessments. They're not happening now, right? And they shouldn't. And, and so I, I think there's a broad feeling, a broad understanding that this is a new situation, and there's a lot of leeway in terms of let's do the best we can. Uh, let's figure out what that means for every school, for every teacher, for every parent, for every student. Okay. Beyond the end of this school year, looking ahead to the next school year, one of the things we know about pandemics is they often come in waves. There could be localized flare-ups. So there's a good chance that some districts, maybe entire systems, will shut down again next year. What advice would you have for school leaders going forward so that they can prepare folks so that the transition next time around is a little more seamless? Well, first of all, I completely agree with your view uh, that there are likely to be some school closures in the fall. Uh, and, and I would say this isn't, I, I'm not just reflecting that as, hey, we've been thinking about this in our small office and here's what we think. It's more about here's what we're hearing from school and district leaders. Uh, and, and so I, I think that's exactly right. What that means first and foremost, uh, I, I think, is that school and district leaders need to plan for flexibility. And what flexibility means is, is it going to be a, a school closure, all schools in the district closed? If so, how long is that going to be? Or might it be a, a requirement for some social distancing in schools? Because if you think about, for instance, if your school buildings aren't 100% closed, but you've got some ability to, let's say, bring in some of the students who have special needs that are more difficult to serve online, can you still bring them into a school building? But we don't know if that's going to be feasible or not. So I think the number one thing is instead of planning as if here's exactly what we're going to do, it's planning with resilience in mind and flexibility in mind. Second thing I'd say adding to that is the, the two issues that we hear about more than anything else are, first of all, equity and access broadly defined, uh, whether that's Internet access, access to uh, computers and other devices, as well as uh, English language learners, special needs students, all those sorts of, of uh, students and situations. So planning for them now as much as possible and using the time over the summer to prepare for them. And then secondly, recognizing that teachers in online schools always say, hey, it took me two or three years to get to the point of being comfortable teaching online. Well, now we've got two or three months. So what can happen over that two or three months to get as many teachers as possible far more comfortable than they've been in this emergency remote learning situation that we've been in for now six weeks or so. Very good. Well, thank you very much, John. This has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been John Watson.
Thank you, Michael.